Alright guys, this is a daily vlog about me becoming Iron Man, so if you're here for the title of the video and you don't want to see any other shit, check below and I'll put a timestamp. Alright guys, check this out. Take this, flip it around, grab it, turn it upside down and it's really heavy. That bitch ain't going anywhere! Cool. I've done that once, it's not the first time I've seen that. But this thing is fucking awesome, guys. Look, so this right here, here's the Mighty Bites. This one got all knurled up because I was using it to put in the threads. But anyway, these go in here and here. So there's three of them one, two, three. And as they get tightened, they get pulled in and pinched into this. And then they're pressed against this. This seems to be working just fine. Yep, don't see it moving at all, which is good. I see a few bubbles that form in here, but. It looks pretty good. Um, so these clip in here, clamp into here, and then this thing is gonna get machined, and then move forward, machine, move forward, machine, move forward, machined. I have two that I can put right here at the end, and then um, there's gonna be a pin that I cut in here when I cut the first part that'll then move up, and that way I know it's in the exact right spot every single time, um, which is awesome. So this is going to work. Doesn't have to work for long, just has to work to get this done, and this is what I'm gonna be building off of after that. <laughs> Excited! So, and then these ones that come in here, these ones right here, hold it after I've taken the perimeter off of this and made it to the exact right size. That's what these are for. These then hold it at that position. So, um, I can hold both the raw stock and then flip it and do the other side once it's been cut to size. <laughs> Alright guys, for starters, how dope is this mirror finish? That's amazing. Now, I ran a hole here, and I didn't get any video because I was focusing so much. So, the inside, well, the inside was a bore. I didn't like the way it bored in either time. When I did the helical interpretation for this adaptive here, um, it was, there was chatter, and then there was chatter when it did the bore in there now. And it looks pretty good. I don't know if you guys can tell. There you go. It does look pretty damn sharp, uh, but that's because I did a contour to clean it up. Um, look at that shininess, isn't that awesome? Um, I did a contour to clean it up, both the inside and the outside, so it looks really solid, but um, it's not, wasn't a great way to do it, and it would not be good for tool life. It would not be good for tool life, and it, um, not really great for the machine either, I don't think, mostly tool life. And then this I know to be just about half a thou under um, a half of an inch, and this is supposed to be a half inch hole, and it, will not go in there. Um, and I measured this, I think it's was it three or four thou undersized, which is a problem I've been having with my machine and I'm not sure why, um, but it's just making everything a little small. I should measure the outside of this. Alrighty here, I'm gonna cover, take out all the light. Nine, seven, oh wow, that's almost perfect. Nine, seven, four, five, and I made this nine, seven, five. So that's really spot on this dimension. I wonder why my circle is not tight. And then let's see if I can remember what I did here. Nine, six. I think this was supposed to be seven, five. So this might be uh, under like by, that could be a lot. Like 15 thou. That wouldn't make sense. I have to go check and see what this dimension is because that doesn't feel right to me. Four, nine, six. Hmm. All right, guys. So I got the numbers from upstairs. That distance that I thought was accurate um, is actually not. And these are all my notes. But essentially, this is the error right here. So um, in the Y, and in the X, so this way and this way on that part, they're both a little bit bigger by almost 10 thou, um, 0 0.0095 thousandths or of an inch. Um, and then the hole is undersized, um, it's a little bit smaller by, by, by about 5 thou. So I don't know why that is.
Welcome back, everybody. Back in my shop late at night. Here I am, um, and I've drilled, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. How beautiful was that facing operation, by the way, as it just came off in a mirror? That was lovely, and then the rest of the day was a headache. <laughs> I swear, I just want this machine to be precise. This is not an aerospace grade machine, guys. It's really unfortunate, because I'm trying to build aerospace shit. <laughs> I want to fly, damn it. Anyway, um, the top of this is really nice. In fact, these holes all look pretty nice too, I dare say. They're all, they all look good. They're all visually nice. They're visually appealing. Um, the problem is, is they don't, they're not the right size. I haven't actually got one big enough yet. Well, I got one that was too big and kind of loose. Um, and for whatever reason, and if you know anything about CNC machines, you know what the fuck's going on. Um, the outside of my square is too big, and the inside of my, sir oh, I've already talked about this. I was just going over it again. But anyway, and I can't get it right. And I, you can go into stock to leave in Fusion 360 and change it. Um, and you can do a negative, and it'll actually cut off more than it suggests. And even so, I'm, I'm just having trouble with it. I just think I'm not gonna get a super awesome, exactly precise fit on this thing, which means I may even have to tram in some of the uh, modular vices, which is the entire point of having a modular vice, not the entire point, but one of the main points of having a modular vice system is you don't have to fucking tram them. Well, I might have, end up having to tram some parts, but anyway, I tried like, let's, I think one, two, three, four, I think I tried five times. <clears throat> No, I tried four times to not drill at all and just use the machine to do the work. And then I drilled once, but then drill by hand. And I realized that wasn't going to work either. So then I had and I had to go in by hand with the drill and drill out the holes. And that removed enough material that I got rid of the chatter. The, tr the chatter on drilling these holes was just god-awful. I couldn't, no matter what I tried, I'm trying a boring operation, which is where it comes in and bores in like this. Kind of like the boring company. I'm also going to build a flamethrower. Um, but I couldn't... I don't have the tolerances dialed 100%, I'm close, but I'm not worried about that. That's pretty easy to mess with the contour. I'm not really too worried about that. And let's see here. I think what I'm gonna end up doing when I make this part is I'm just gonna have to drill the holes out by hand just to get the bulk of the material out and then I'll do the finishing passes with the uh, machine and that'll still have be exact and precise. It just, you know, it's not that much fun. You have a CNC machine to get in there with a hand drill and drill shit out, but it is what it is. It's going to take a long time to make all these holes, and then I have to make another plate after that for Derek. I knew I was going to hate drilling holes by the time of this, and I'm already hating it, and I've only made six. So by the time I make all, like, 200 of the ones I'm going to make, whew, but it's okay. Um, this material is also a lot thicker, so once I actually, when I actually do the actual hole, it'll break through, and that'll be easier. Um, it'll actually help a chip, chip, well, no, no, it won't. Uh, I was going to say it'll help with chip evacuation. That'll help when I do the one inch piece, which I have a big thick of one, in, one inch piece. That's going to be, that's going to be a lot. That's for Derek. Um, I can do it though. I have faith. I have confidence in my abilities to get that done. Um, and also the one for Derek isn't nearly as big as the one I'm building for myself. So, um, yeah, guys, uh, if you're watching this, uh, I told you that there would be something for you guys. So, uh, because, like I said, this is all about drilling holes. Um, and if I had to give some advice, I would say the I have I bought a carbide drill from um, where is it? Lakeshore Carbide. I can't find it. Where is it? Here it is. Anyway, here's my Lakeshore Carbide. It's a it, it if you're using a router. Unless you know something I don't. You can't put anything in it that's not like an exact dimension, something you don't have a collet for. And they only make like three collet sizes for this thing anyway. And one of them they don't even make. Oop, there goes my camera. One of them I had to buy from my, the guy who built my CNC router. That company's kind of got issues. Um, so I didn't really want to buy anything else from them. But anyway, you have eighth, quarter, and half inch. And I tried drilling with an end mill, which you can do, and I, it works in wood just fine, um, but you can't do it with a quarter inch end mill. You could probably do it with an eighth inch, but uh, having a point on it helps it keep it from wandering. So this actually did really good. Now, when I first drilled it in there, I actually want to show it to you. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Can you see it? I want you to be able to see it. There, come on. It does not want to focus on it. There you go. If you can tell, there's got some silver around it. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't know if there's just some kind of la thin layer of, of like coating on this that got wiped off, or if there's a very thin layer of aluminum that's sticking to it. I'm not sure which is wh which, what's happening. Um, but either way, it's, it's not chip welding, and it's the, the, the blade of the... The aluminum's not sticking to it. 
it's cutting really well, in other words. By the way, this is great news for my Iron Man suit because um, I have to drill out the corners of all my parts, and that this is what's going to allow me to do that. And then I'm going to finish it with a chain, with a contour, um, with an one eighth inch bit. But this is how I'm dealing with the corners: is just to drill them out, um, which is definitely the way to go. So uh, I'm glad that this works. This is very good, very good. So, and it doesn't. It, it chattered like a few times, like just a couple times going in, but for the most part, it just went in and out really well. And a few times, I even made some really pretty spiral uh, flutes coming out, like like an actual CNC, like the John Saunders CNC, New York CNC, maybe it's a Tormach. One of those one of those logos has that spiral in it. I'm trying to find one to show you guys, but I don't see one. Yeah, I think they all got blown away. But anyway, um, I got a few of those, which was pretty exciting because it was like l looked very legit. There's a couple times it went because I'm pecking. I'm doing full retract, pecking in and out. Um, I got the spindle going as low as possible. What is my feed per tooth? I should tell you guys that. I think it's not very much. It's 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 based on the twist, um, and it's I think it's less than a thou. I think. I think it's 0.75 thou. I think is what I used. Should I go check? I should go check so I can tell you. A half thou per revolution. So each revolution of the uh, router, every time it spins, it, pro it progresses a uh, half thou into the workpiece. Um, and that was good. I wasn't rubbing. I was getting proper, like I said, a proper chip, um, and that worked. So that was good. Uh, what else you should do is get, I was actually able, I spot drilled it just with the carbide drill. Didn't use a spot drill. Just spotted it and then drilled it. So that works really well too. I don't even know if that's necessary. I might do any, I have one hole left, so I may do another experiment where I try to do like what I actually want to use and really nail down because I have that one last hole. But um, yeah, that works. And then what you want to do is you want to bore it out, um, and that's a tool path in Fusion 360s, bore out that path. And then what you want to do is come in with a contour, so do stock to leave, so leave some stock in there. I, I think I left like two thou, two or three thou, not very much, because um, I, I want that board to have as much room to get chips out as possible. Um, and that is like a very small um, chip load as well. I think that might be like, I think that's like 0.2 um, foul, which is very thin. I may even bump that because you don't want to rub and produce heat and melt the metal. You want to actually cut it and shear it away. I might bump that up just a little bit because I got rid of the chatter by cutting everything out with the end mill. I might bump that up a little bit, maybe all the way up to half, maybe like three or four, um, point three or four thou, not three or four thou, that'd be a huge chip load. But something like that, yeah, I'm covered in dust. So then you want to bore it down, and then you want to go in and do a 2D contour to cut it, to cut it, and that's how you make a very pretty part. Um, obviously, you could use a reamer. Uh, you could take a reamer and um, put it in a drill and do that after, but it wouldn't be all concentric and stuff. Assuming you had a, a very straight machine. Now my machine is not super straight, so I think in the X it's a little bit, a little bit oblong. I think it's a little bit wider in the X than it is in the Y. I'm not sure why that is. Um, it's just not a perfect machine. And I'm just going to have to accept that it's not a perfect machine. Uh, I need a Tormach, guys. Buy me a Tormach. Subscribe to my channel so I can buy a Tormach. Um, yeah, that's about it. I hope maybe that helps someone. I don't know. If not, you know, whatever. This is my journey to become Iron Man. That's what I did today. Lots of holes. Bye.